Attack! <laughs> All right, so we're here with the artist behind these 3D and other. Tim Biotti. All right. So, when did you create these? When did you start working in 3D? Uh, I started working in 3D in the early part of 2000, but I was using a kind of a, a much different uh, method called Chroma Depth. It's got special glasses. But oh, okay. You just put red things in front of blue things, that kind of thing. Very simplistic kind of 3D. I started learning to do this anaglyphic stuff in uh, late, I'll say August of 2002. I've been doing it ever since. It's primarily what I do now. Cool. So is it all done manually? Yeah. Originally I had to use this real complex, like I would have to draw something in yeah. my drawing. Like I drew these from photographs, these two large figures. I would draw it in pencil, then I'd trace that and break the drawing down into the basic lines. You know, even shadows would just be surrounded by lines. It's as simple as I could make it. Then I'd have to trace that in red. Then I'd have to use the move the tracing paper around to do a blue-green separation. And then I'd have to, like, if I wanted it on big paper, I'd have to put a yellow grid on the big paper. Yeah rid the thing up. So I did that for about a year and a half, then started doing it freehand. Cool. All right. What's the other pieces? Those are... The are other pieces are a lot older. This uh, Millennium was done, basically it was inspired by the big harmonic convergence of 1987. And uh, so I spent like two years working on the thing. Cool. And the other one was a much later like sequel after Goblin Hood, the performance character had been done in the corner there with the dolls. After he had been uh, more or less running around for several years doing his volunteer shaman thing, uh, then he, then I did a painting like that for him. I called that network realism, having as many, as much information as you can presented like in this form, it's like in a garden. In that form, it's like in a little cityscape, you know? Yeah. It gives you a chance to say all kinds of stuff. And it's, it's meant to like... Like when I look at a chair, I know it's a chair, but if I didn't know everything else, basically, that I know, the chair wouldn't mean anything to me. It'd just be an object, and I wouldn't even know what an object was. So network realism was suggesting that when we look at anything, we're perceiving it from the standpoint of everything we know, you know, sort of a God's eye view. Cool. Yeah? I haven't looked at them with the glasses yet. Actually, I did for like one second. I think those are the ones I looked at. Yeah, these will look a lot better when we get the top of the window oh, okay. covered up. Right now it's hard to see them with the glare. And I don't know how they'd show up on video anyway. Nah, they're not going to show up on video. They have to be here to experience yeah. it. Oh, you nice. weren't here if you happen to be listening to this at some far distant moment in the yeah. future. But we are here right now. This is probably one of the best I've done, and it's like the third or fourth version of uh, that same portrait. Right. Get one a long time ago that not only can you see the yellow grid lines, but I, I drew it in pencil on corde you know, taped the corrugated cardboard, so it's got like a cord oh, corrugated wow. background. <laughs> cool. So, I mean, it seems like the simpler they are, the better they work. All right.